thank everyone for coming to Hello. Symposium. I apologize for a little bit of the technical difficulties at the beginning of the session, but uh, we are here and we are live, so um, we will just continue on. So as I mentioned, this is our uh, next in our series of our Marching to March, and the, the purpose of this webinar is to give you, you an idea of what will be happening within each of the working groups at the 2017 CSS. So as part of our agenda today, we have each of uh, the working group co-leads to talk to what their working group will actually be doing uh, during the March meeting. So before we kind of jump into the uh, heart of the presentations, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of uh, the CS collaboration as well as the 2017 meeting itself. If you have any questions during the course of this session, please type them into the chat or the question functionality of the uh, GoToWebinar and we will answer those at the end of the session. So I know a lot of you have probably seen these introductory slides quite a bit before, but it always serves as a good refresher as we may have uh, some new folks on the call. And, and last year at the 2016 CSS, probably about 40% uh, of the attendees were actually first-time attendees. So, you know, we're expecting the same at this year's meeting, so it's always great to have uh, new people in attendance and just to remind them, you know, why we're doing what we're doing. So the mission of the, the collaboration itself is really just to provide a transparent forum where we, when I say we, I mean industry, regulators, academics, technology companies can come together in a non-competitive environment and address a lot of the challenges that we're facing in this drug development and device development space because ultimately you know who we serve in this this space is is mankind and it's the people that need effective treatments and effective therapies so if we can do our part by coming together and making a difference uh, then we should really that's the point of the of the collaboration so the framework for the collaboration is we have these five uh, working groups and you're going to hear from one of the co-leads today from each of these working groups and I'll tell you about what they're going to be doing at the 2017 CSS so um, Overseeing each of the overseeing these working groups is a steering committee, and it's made up of people from industry, from FDA, um, you know, from technology companies to kind of just set the tone for the collaboration to ensure that if there are challenges that are, are the working groups are are having, that uh, those challenges can be addressed. If there are deliverables that we need to promote or other activities that we need to to uh, attend to, the steering committee um, is is where that uh, occurs. So where you can actually get more information outside of these webinars on the uh, activities that are occurring within the computational science collaboration, uh, there's a few places. One is the FUSE website. It's uh, recently been redesigned, and on the website you'll find um, an overview of the FUSE working group. So if you go to this FUSE working group section of the FUSE website, you can see all of the active projects that are currently ongoing within each of the working groups, as well as contact information uh, for the working group, as well as for the project. So if you see something on the website, um, underneath this working group section that appeals to you and you want to get involved, the contact information is right there. Uh, we also have the FUSE deliverables catalog, so all of the work packages like the SDRG for clinical, the non-clinical SDRG, the FUSE code repository, uh, a series of white papers, etc. All the work products that have come out of this collaboration are consolidated in one place in this FUSE deliverables catalog, which again is also available on the FUSE website. So we do, um, within the context of the collaboration, like to vet our deliverables with the larger community. We know that not everyone can participate in the working group, but you, we know that people do want to have their voices heard. So as we release new uh, work packages, we will post those for public comment. So if there are work packages where we like would like um, we have deliverables, which gives you how you can make comments. You want a group project and you want to have your voice in other to influence what goes on with it.
So I hope my audio is back now and you can hear me. Um, looks like we are having a... ...to uh, uh, the other working group leaders to actually talk to, to their uh, activities that would be going on within their working groups. I just want to confirm, can you hear me? I thought, no, this, this problem's you are breaking up quite a bit. We can hear you now, but most of what you've okay, said is that as a no and pass yeah. this off to Jeff. So just while this is taking place, my name is Jeff Lowe, I'm the co-chair for the Emerging Trends and Technologies Group. Um, once I get control, I'll be able to go through a, a short deck of um, what the projects have been going on this year and uh, uh, what we're planning to do around the CSS okay. itself. So perhaps if I just start talking through it until we get to it. So over this past year, we've had a pretty successful year. Oh, well, a yeah, pretty successful year for some of the projects, other ones have been slightly mixed. Um, so I'm going to start off by talking about the lowering the barriers to cloud adoption. Um, that project has, a, has had a, a very good year. Um, so they started off around the CSS the, um, last year where they uh, basically put together a second, uh, second copy of the framework and they've, uh, and they've just been continuing to work on that. They released, a, I think, a third version um, on or about the time of the AWS reInvent. Um, event itself, and uh, that was re received very, very well. Um, so obviously getting that sort of coverage has, has been very good for, for them and also for Fuse as well. Um, they're also, at the, at the time, they're, they're keeping going and they're looking for the, the next steps for the, for the next projects. Data visualizations, um, the, the project's been um, busy this year looking at a number of different ways as to how <laughs> effective data visualizations could be used in the industry. Um, They've reviewed and explored a broad range of graphics, standards, best practice, processes, technologies, and organizations. They had a bit of a pivot towards the end of the year because, um, uh, as you're probably aware, data analytics is a, is a pretty broad subject, um, and they were trying to, to solve all the problems. But they realized that that's not feasible, so they've refocused. Uh, let's see. They're looking, they've refocused this year, they've got a really engaged leadership team and they're looking to push that forward. Um, statistical computing environments, um, that was very busy last year, um, they've kind of sort of wound down a wee bit towards the end of the year. Um, they've had some changes at the top, um, but what they started working on around the time of the last CSS is putting together some use cases because I'm sure you're aware they would have done the, um, the State of the Union effectively for uh, SCE. Um, systems around in the industry and so they were looking to build upon that to build start building some use cases uh, again owing to some changes in, in leadership and and the people's ability to participate that's kind of fell, fallen off a wee bit but what's happened in the last couple of weeks is we've identified somebody who's going to step in and, and I'm quite excited about that because it's kind of harmonizing two projects that are actually ongoing across the fuse infrastructure which I think is, is to the, the benefits of, all, of us all. Then we have the alternative transport format which is essentially trying to look for uh, a reason and a way to replace SAS transport as the, the primary exchange format for um, data sets themselves. So we put together a list of criteria for evaluation. We actually sent out a questionnaire for the criteria um, to the wider fuse community and see this. Um, we got some responses back on that. We've done some analysis, and um, we're at, at this moment we're preparing a white paper. Um, so then, what we've got planned for the CSS? Um, Lauren the Barrier. Hi, Jeff. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but we can't sure. see your slides. Do you have any slides? I am showing, as far as I can tell, I'm showing my main screen. Yeah. Can you? Yes. There should be a note saying OK as your made presenter, but it doesn't seem to. I maybe if I click a box, that. that's it. Sorry, sorry, everyone. That's, so it, that's the, fine. Uh, we can see. Great. So the plans for this year are to um, for the 
Lauren Barrett's cloud adoption, um, they're going to be brainstorming ideas around the next steps. They have acknowledged, and I'm sure everyone around you will be aware that the the, the cloud itself has become even more pervasive across uh, the wider industry and, and certainly our, or the wider world and certainly our industry as a whole. Um, and so with that, there's a lot of opportunities for a, a well-engaged and um, uh, effective group like the Lauren Barrett's group. Um, and so they're going to be looking at brainstorming what they can do next. Um, and then they're also going to start put, uh, putting together a plan for execution for the remainder of 2017. Data visualizations uh, are going to be discussing and planning the goals and deliverables for 2017. As I said, they've, they've narrowed the focus by, by quite a large chunk um, to to some things that it, the, to some topics that people are very well aware of, uh, very experienced with, and also that actually have quite a bit of there's been quite a bit of work done in the past. So they're going to focus on um, uh, two main priorities, patient profiles, um, looking at the trends, emerging um, new approaches, and then also trying to work out what the, the, the relative benefit of uh, static versus dynamic or interactive visualizations will be to help improve processes um, and actually make data submissions much better. The statistical computing environment is not planning to meet the CSS at this point. As I said, the, the project itself is, is re-engaging. Um, so if you are interested in, in this, please do get in contact with me and I'll put you in contact. Uh, the alternative transport formats, um, we're looking at the finalized white paper. So the, the plan at the moment is to have a draft white paper available um, on or about the time of CSS. Um, and the reason we want to do that is uh, the project was broken into two parts. Phase one, which was essentially identifying uh, how you could replace the SAS transport file. Um, phase two is actually now, now you've got the um, identified or identified the criteria that are important for a replacement SAS transport file. Let's see what we can do with the existing format out there. So um, uh, I'm not going to steal any Tim Thunder about this, but uh, there's going to be a, an event at the CSS that um, is going to be very helpful to our group. So we're going to be looking to, to work with those people to make sure that they get the most out of them. Um, there will be, so we've been talking about this, the uh, link data and, and graph databases um, group uh, and emerging te trends technologies are sort of spiritually aligned. Um, so we are going to try and take, take advantage of uh, opportunities to, to cross-pollinate as much as possible. So if you are interested in either of these topics, do please do come along um, because you might find that you can, that you can switch about as much as you like. And then also we'd like to have a, a quick discussion about um, any sort of new uh, projects uh, on the horizon. So one of the ones that is currently in planning that I'm aware of is uh, addressing the, um, the use case for possibly adopting HL7 for clinical research. It's um, something that's quite vibrant at the moment and quite interesting and it's something I'm personally very interested in. Um, and so and if you have any other ideas, please use the CSS as an opportunity to get in contact because it's, it's really... Um, what we need to do to keep this moving along. Um, let's see. Okay, and then I am handing it on to uh, it Jane. Jane Lovano. Yeah. Yes. There you go. Thank you so much. Can you see my screen? Uh, my name is Jane Lozano. I am one of the co-leads for the Optimizing the Use of Data Standards Working Group, and I'm going to do a little something different today. I don't have slides, but what I want to share with you are the projects that we will be having our breakout sessions for at the CSS in March. We do have a project that's not on here that is close to completion. It's the best practices for metadata documentation. Uh, reviewer's guide versus a define. That group is very close to having a white paper done and did not need any time at the CSS. So what I'd like to do is go through each of these projects and as you can see this is these are the times that I have allotted for the groups to meet and to give you an idea of if you're part of one of these projects when I have you slotted to meet and where. The first one is the Data Reviewer's Guide in XML. This is still a fairly new project and it the purpose of this project is to start it's going to start off with an SDRG 
the, non, the clinical SDRG and putting that actually into XML, which could be also done with other, the other reviewer guides and possibly other documents as well that we'll have time on Monday. The Define 2.0 Implementation and Style Sheet Recommendations, that's really two groups. One is creating some completion guidelines for Define 2.0 and then also style sheet recommendations. This group has been meeting for quite a while. This project has been going on for quite a while. Hopefully they can come to some closure on their deliverables and I do have time set up for the project at CSS. The third one is the Legacy Data Conversion Plan and Report. This is referenced in the Technical Conformance Guide that any time data is being converted from legacy or non-standardized data, data that does not conform to what is listed in the Data Standards Catalog, to standardized data, the FDA has requested that a Legacy Data Conversion Plan and Report be written to help reviewers and especially if analysis was done and this conversion was done to help reviewers identify where that data is and standardized data versus how it was produced for a report from your legacy analysis data. We definitely are continuing to meet. We are at a point where we have now a decision tree because that was something that we really had a hard time coming up with was when do we need to have this done? There are three instances in the technical conformance guide that show traceability and issues when you convert legacy non-standardized data to standardized data. We felt that we really needed a, a, some type of a decision tree to tell us when do we need this because it goes all the way back to whether your data was collected in an environment or a system that was C-dash conformant or not. We have a couple groups that are ready to work on completion guidelines and example documents, but we have to go back and get the template prepared. And this has been somewhat difficult, I'll be honest, uh, just because it's very subjective and every conversion could be different. So some of the things you know that you are going to put into a reviewer's guide, for example, it's very straightforward. This one is not as, as straightforward as it's sounds at a high level, yes, we can say how data was converted, but when you go actually dig into a conversion and there could be differences, how do you put it together a template? What kind of questions go in there? And it is going to be a standalone document. It will not go into the study data reviewer's guide because it could also go into the analysis data reviewer's guide. We have talked to this with FDA to create a separate document and that's what we're going to do. When we get into March, hopefully we will have a template because we still have some time before then, but we need to finalize the decision tree so that we can get started on the template once again and then get to completion guidelines and example documents. So we still have a lot of work to do, but we should be able to get a lot of that in person at CSS. So if you're coming and you're part of this group, please please join in. The next project is the SDTM Add-on Implementation FAQ, which started last year at CSS. It's actually it, there's a lot here. It is also working with CDISC on this, and also I should say that the Define 2.0 implementation. We're also working with with CDISC as well. But for this one, there's a lot of different nuances in standards and companies are applying different versions of the IG. And there's a lot of questions that come out of that as far as what version do I use? And there's actually five different subsets, five different sub working groups within this, this group. This is a pretty big group. So I have allotted quite a bit of time for them to, to meet. But it's going to be similar to something that SEND did as far as having a means to provide questions and then a way to show what those are and for others to look at. This is with all the different versions that are acceptable by FDA and then the data standards catalog. This is a very good group to address these issues. And they're mostly SDTM. There are some Atom, but there's a lot with SDTM. 
The next project is the study data standardization plan. That one is, I don't have as much time set up for that. However, we are going to review comments. The FDA put out an FR notice for intent to review. That the, the time period for review was up a couple weeks ago. FDA is going to collate their comments and then we will look through those at CSS. My, I'm leading this group and we are going to go through other comments before FUSE, before, before March, as comments that have been generated as people are using it. And within Lilly, where I work, we've been using this quite a bit. And of course, as we go through that, we have comments, some things we didn't even, we didn't think of as we were putting this together. We do have a template, we have completion guidelines, example documents, and then also a sponsor implementation plan that helps guide those that are creating a study data standardization plan how to implement that. And you have to have an owner and things like that. We hope to have a completed template after FUSE so that it can be put out onto the FUSE wiki and store it with a version, just like we are doing with the study data reviewer guide and the ADRG as well. I've been working on this one for a couple of years now and looking forward to having, the, having it completed. The next project is one that's actually new. We have a project request. It's gone, we're going to talk about it through the steering committee that Scott mentioned at the beginning of this webinar. And I do have time allotted for it. It's best practices for data collection and instructions. And we are working with the Scripps group on this. It really deals with having concise, clear, consistent instructions for the sites for collecting adverse events, concomitant meds. And there are several, there's, there's certain domains that are going to be focused on at first, but it, flows through to the standard reporting and the standard scripts that are developed if the data isn't collected a certain way and you have clear instructions on how to do that then it flows into that reporting and analysis piece. This project is looking for people to join. We do have someone who can lead it. However, it requires volunteers such as yourself to get involved with that. That is Monday. That is going to happen on Monday. Then on Tuesday, same thing. I have time allotted for the same projects. Then we also have a working group wrap up and something we did last year, a roundtable discussion. And that's where we can generate ideas on new projects, on things that someone would like, would like to work on or lead or think that this group should, should uh, endeavor in. And, create a project request for it. We might have, actually there's another project that we might also have. It's still early in the beginning and in the, in the initiation of the project. I might be adding another one, but that is what we have planned for March. And then also out on the Fuse Wiki, if you want more details about each of the projects that it is out here under our optimizing use of data standards page. And that is it. Who should I pass control to now? Um, I think it's Susan. To Sue. Okay. All right. Thank you. I just have to figure out how to do that now. If you right um, click over her name. Got it. All right. Thank you. Okay, Jane, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, hi everyone, this is Sue DeHaven. I'm one of the co-leads of the Non-Clinical Topics Working Group. And this slide just reminds uh, everyone of our mission. Um, we've been got ongoing a long time now, a few years, so uh, we've updated a bit um, around our uh, Driving for improving non-clinical assessments, translational science approaches, and that's between uh, non-clinical and clinical, 
and regulatory science through non-clinical data management topics. Um, we're an innovative working group, I'll say that, and very active, um, providing frameworks to collaboratively address key needs and challenges in the field of non-clinical science. Um, so coming to the CSS this year since the last one, uh, I just outlined uh, some highlights from each of our projects and what we're bringing uh, this year. So uh, the non-clinical SDRG project is uh, delivering a, a, a template package um, that will be <coughs> update the one that's currently on the website uh, that includes the FDA intent to review FR notice feedback. Um, so that's, that's a big step between uh, last year and this year. The good news is not a lot of huge changes, but some more guidance to help people fill out that document. Um, the SEND Implementation Group, uh, they are continue to be an active knowledge base uh, for SEND Implementation. Their wiki page has over 95,000 views. It uh, shows up as one of the top 50 uh, wiki pages uh, in our FUSE site, and there's a lot of good information there, and, and uh, even more every day. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Investigating Endpoint Modeling Project published a white paper on modeling data for non-clinical biomarkers. Uh, that paper is now available, and um, you can, <clears throat> from this slide deck, be able to uh, to get there to read that. It's really interesting, and we're going to continue to investigate uh, different kinds of endpoints and how to model them in the SEND format. The visualization of group-related dis differences in histopathology data uh, published a, a, an article that's been quite popular at my company um, on a graphical display of histopathology from tox studies, uh, both discovery and development uh, uh, life cycle studies. Um, there was a, a, an interesting survey, and, and I know that is being passed around quite a lot by the pathologists in our organization. So uh, that article is now available. Um, our, one of our highlights, the Industry Send Readiness Survey, um, we had really great feedback on the survey last year. We had a lot of interest from regulatory agencies as well as uh, CROs and sponsors on, you know, where are the different organizations in being able to provide SEND submissions. Our second annual survey is out now. The deadline is February 10th, and we would love it if everyone possible could uh, click on that link and fill out the survey. The results will be available at the CSS for a breakout session. Um, the non-clinical script assessment group, if anyone's having uh, a little bit of trouble or challenge by the technical rejection criteria announced a little uh, late last year uh, from FDA, they've developed a script to automatically generate the TS domains necessary even for legacy studies. So that's a super interesting uh, new capability. There's a poster going to be on it at CSS, and the guys who developed that will be there to help you, uh, show you how to use it uh, if you're interested in that. Uh, the test submission forum group, uh, they were very active this year, partnering with the FDA Fit for Use pilot, and they did some industry surveys on barriers to testing non-clinical submissions with FDA, and are also actively involved in collating the industry feedback uh, from that fit-for-use pilot. Uh, the data consistency between SEND data sets and study report, uh, they've identified potential differences and will provide their recommendations in part of a breakout session there to uh, help companies navigate uh, being able to communicate if there's differences and why. And the SEND data analysis, data for analysis project um, they probably delivered the most this year, uh, but the project is really on hold because they delivered a baby. Actually, one of the co-leads delivered a baby. Uh, so, um, but they'll be back in action uh, for the CSS uh, coming in March. So, um, you know, I, I, this is a plea from, from our group to all of you, come engage with us at the CSS. Um, day one, Monday, will be focused on the topics of standardized data learnings and opportunities for scientists. Uh, we intend during the um, breakouts that day to have a SEND test submission industry panel to communicate our lessons learned on test submissions and fit for use, uh, provide our feedback. FDA has been actively providing their feedback on the fit for use pilot in various public venues, 
and it's time for the industry to kind of give our side of that, uh, how it felt for us to participate in that really excellent and useful pilot. Um, and the final study report versus send, the data consistency, um, what it is and isn't, and the recommendations of that team uh, will be discussed in a, in a panel environment. Um, the data visualization and scripts discussion forum, another part of the non-clinical breakouts from Monday, um, how to functionalize recommendations of the histopathology visualization that were published in that journal article I mentioned, um, recommendations from Send for Analysis, and also some feedback on FDA's kickstart. And so this will be an interesting uh, open discussion on the kind of visualizations that have been coming out over the, you know, the past year and how to functionalize them with actual scripts uh, to uh, develop graphs, tables, et cetera, for visualization. Um, they are going to explore leveraging IMI ETOX data um, with a send format or with these different scripts visualizations and also talk about opportunities with different tools um, than other than SAS or other than what we're used to. And they have a lot of good discussion about developing our scripts there. Oops, for day two. Uh, day two is going to be more about sharing send experiences. And, you know, we have no silos. Fuse is a very, very collaborative organization across different uh, industry stakeholders, regulatory agencies, um, and as, as well as other consortium groups. So we have a CDISC and Fuse collaborative uh, session planned on modeling, which is primarily the job of the CDIS then group, and the implementation challenges, which FUSE is here to help with. Um, so we have a couple of great topics there. We will present the send readiness survey results on Tuesday, and we're hoping to develop an international session here. This is our stretch objective, uh, for sure, for the CSS, uh, looking for international perspectives on both the FDA requirement and also expectations of other regulatory agencies. Uh, this is always an interesting topic. And of course, at the end, we'll have a pulse check on our current project, and we'll have a session on prioritizing our new project ideas. So, um, you know, how can you get involved? You've heard from the other working groups and, and Scott. Um, for sure, contact the working group co-leads. Um, we're, we're here to help you get in touch. Um, our non-clinical working group wiki site, uh, similar to the one Jane showed. And of course, uh, come to the CSS in March. That's where the most fun happens. So thank you very much. And now I will pass it to Tim. Okay, thank you very much, Sue. Okay. And hopefully you'll be able to see my screen in just a moment. And if someone could let me know if you can, that would be great. Yes, I see it. Perfect. Thank you very much, everyone. And I'm going to cover some of the plans for the Link Data and Graph Database Working Group uh, for the CSS coming right out. We do have a new name this year. We're formerly known as the Semantic Technology Group. And we dealt primarily with Link Data, so Semantic Web, Resource Description Framework, or RDF, and those topics. But we decided on a name change to reflect a broadened scope for uh, this conference and going forward. So we are also adding graph databases, things like the linked property graph, Neo4j, and others, and maybe look at expanding into things like graph visualization, graph analytics, process modeling using graphs, dependency modelings with graphs, and so on. So we're looking for some new ideas, new projects, and new energy within the group. It was a busy year for us in, in 2016. There was the Regulations to RDF group that developed a searchable interface for regulations as linked data, and that's been taken back in-house at the FDA. So a definite success there where they're taking that project and expanding its scope within the FDA. We also have the Clinical Development Design Group. So their goal here is to improve design decisions using linked data, and they're building a clinical development design ontology submitting their plans to a peer-reviewed journal that's underway now, and they're really witnessing a lot of growing interest within our ind industry for their efforts. So they're refocusing a little bit for uh, 2017 and beyond. The analysis results and metadata group, I co-led that project with Mark Anderson. We concluded that project this year by developing a prototype for analysis results as linked data. 
and as part of our deliverables, have an R package available on GitHub and a technical specification for a multi-dimensional RDF data cube for analysis results. So that's out there if anyone's looking for it as a jumping off point for modeling some analysis results as linked data. In terms of our plans for the 2017 CSS, we have our agenda available out on our wiki, so that link will be made available when the slides come out, so you can check us out there. But it will kick off on Sunday night with a workshop, much as it did last year at the CSS, only this year it is an actual hands-on experience. I am sorry to say that the session is full. We did have to limit it to 30 attendees because it is a very interactive experience. We need to be able to help the attendees as we go through the steps. And in that workshop, we will create and explore linked data using both the Neo4j linked property graph and RDF, complete with some ontology work and a little bit of inferencing as well. We will also demo a couple of SDTM domains as both linked property graph and RDF. And all of this will then lay the foundations for what we wish to do in the rest of the sessions. We will have some inter interesting breakouts and the launch of a new project. The new project I'd like to mention, and not just because I'm one of the co-leads here with uh, Armando Oliva, is SDTM data as RDF. So we are looking at the conversion of SDTM domain data to linked data to build a context-free set of SDTM values. And of course, we will leverage existing things like the SDTM terminologies, RDF, CDIS standards, and others, and bring those technologies into the linked data area. We will also develop a minimal supporting ontology and look heavily into validation and even bringing in the metadata elements of define. So constructing define would just become a query. All of that data would be integral with the data itself. The main goal here is to create highly compliant SDTM data domains. And we're still hearing that even after all this time, the FDA has a challenge when it comes to validation of this data and by integrating things like spin rules and uh, link data, we really hope to make this a lot stronger. Now, if you're looking, you, know, you have a bit of an interest here, but you don't have much experience with RDF, you're not able to attend the workshop, don't let that put you off. If you don't have linked data expertise, no problem. We need various experts to come in. If you have a little bit of experience with CDIS, with R, you're interested in data visualization, you have experience in validation, you know, a little bit about study design, data collection, analysis, we could use your help. And you can learn linked data as you go. We are there to help support you and, and learn as you go. That's how I started learning it. Just jump into a project and start learning. That's the part of the excitement of, of the conference and of these projects. As Jeff mentioned, we have a joint session between the linked data and graph database group with a project within emerging technologies, the alternative transport format. And we're doing something a little new this year calling it a bit of a linkathon where we will get together and do a head-to-head -head of the old transport format versus anything else we can think of. XML, link property graph, RDF, JSON-LD, whatever. If you have an idea, come to this, join our group, and let's do a head-to-head -head and see what we can replace the transport format with. What I heard last year at the CSS is everyone agreed that the transport format has to go, but there was not much consensus on what it should be as the replacement. So let's try to figure that out in the two days of the conference as we break out into subgroups and experiment a little bit with various technologies. So as part of that group, we will develop some pros and cons, some recommendations, and develop future steps where we might want to delve into a little bit further. We are also looking for some new ideas, so as, as you come and you experience what linked data means, we will be trying to develop some new project ideas, and some idea generation as we start to wrap up. So process and code dependency modeling might be one. Interactive visualization of linked data is something I'm very interested in. Uh, metadata, traceability, metadata repositories as linked data. And I'm just throwing this one out here, maybe text mining augmented with an RDF ontology might be of interest. So bring your ideas. I'm sure you may have some or may think of some while you're there. And we will look forward to having you as, as part of our team. So I look forward to seeing you there. That's all I have today. So I am going to attempt to uh, pass off. Let me see if uh, Anne Ming has joined us or not. I don't Hi, believe Tim, so. it's actually Mary. Oh, it's Mary. My apologies, Mary. 
See if I can hand off to you. Last minute change. (laughs) (laughs) Very good. Well, Mary, I believe I've handed off to you. Okay. I see your screen. All right, good. Okay, so I'm Mary Nelson. I'm one of the co-leads for the Standard Analyses and Code Sharing Working Group, along with Haming, who did have a last-minute conflict. So I'll cover this. Um, just some of these initial slides are just in case someone who, you know, is new on the call, just have a few introductory slides to tell you what our working group is about. So we are about trying to establish, it, you know, a setting to share. Uh, standard analyses and code for teams to use and companies to use and regulatory agencies and so forth. So we're, our vision is to fill the gap on the analysis side of things kind of at at the end of the standards flow. And we do um, have a shared reusable code library where the vision is where all of us can contribute toward it and, and use code from it. So that's the, the big vision, I guess, of our working group. And, and it has been kind of stable across time. This is, these have been our mission and goals and vision from you know, the start in 2012. So most of our project teams have been focused on this same vision. So we have three focus areas and six active projects. So four projects are associated with this reusable code library or the script repository. Um, we do have one new project that that is to create a good test data. So when we make these scripts, um, it, it really helps to have really good test data. And while the CDISC pilot data has been useful, it doesn't always have everything that we need to uh, for the scripts that we're trying to develop. So that is a new project. We are looking for volunteers for that particular project. And then we have the analysis and displays white papers team and a communication and promotion education project team. So the test data set factory project, uh, Peter Schaefer is leading that. And we, anyone who's interested in this can certainly um, you know, let us know so you can get involved. We do not believe we'll spend much time on this particular project at the CSS unless something changes between now and then and we get a whole bunch of interest. But as of right now, um, we're, I'm not even sure if the project lead can make it, and so we're not planning to spend much time at the CSS, but that doesn't mean we're not excited about this project and we certainly want volunteers for it. Uh, so the, a lot of things have already happened over the years. So we have the repository, a lot of the legal things have been set up, the qualification guidelines have been set up. Um, a lot of you know user-friendly index so the future work that is needed is really all about getting scripts into the repository so we still need always need volunteers to help develop scripts and contribute to the repository but a lot of the upfront work has already been completed and we've had quite a few scriptathons um, we've received scripts from the FDA that they use as part of their jumpstart service so Again, a lot has already been accomplished, but a lot is still needs to happen. So we're definitely excited to use the CSS to make progress with the script repository. The other, uh, where we're at with the standard analyses part of the project, or the white papers project team, again, a lot of accomplishments are ready, but we're still kind of in the middle of it all. So five white papers have been finalized. One white paper is almost finalized, but we have at least four or five additional white papers in the plan. So again, this is still a very active project and we're also planning to use the CSS to continue work and you know, develop our timeline and ideas for future white papers. So our next steps are to you know, get going on this test data set factory project, continue work on the script rep- repository, continue work on the white paper. So as I alluded to, we have other white papers in, in the plan. So just to give you an idea of what some of those are, we have a hepatotoxicity white paper that's getting close to having a first draft done. We have a questionnaire data white paper. We're planning on a white paper to discuss different definitions for treatment emergence for adverse events. Um, a one plan for events of special interest. Uh, and then we are going to maintain our white paper. So even for some of the white papers we have already completed, 
we're already starting to plan on updating some of those to have even better suggested displays for some of these topics. And then we will aggressively work on a communication and education plan associated with some of this work. So at this CSS, we, we do have a Monday night workshop that our working group is hosting. To be honest, I don't know if it's full already. Maybe you know when I'm done, somebody can let us know. Um, but our plans for that particular workshop is to, I guess, give people who are, might be new to GitHub, which is what's used for our repository, a chance to learn uh, or see how to use it, how to see the scripts, get scripts in and out of GitHub. We plan on having a demo for the jumpstart scripts that the FDA contributed toward the repository. And we also have um, a company who is contributing a Spotfire visualization interactive display package, and that's a contributed uh, package that will be in the script repository, and we plan on having a short demo of that work as well. Uh, so, and then we also, during our breakout sessions, we do plan on the script repository project teams to meet together to you know, identify the next priorities for the group, which scripts to develop, and you know, define some input formatting and create um, a test environment. So, you know, we're definitely going to have a breakout session for the project teams involved with the repository. We'll also have a breakout session for the white papers project team. We will work on plans for our upcoming white papers. We'll probably talk about any remaining issues or discussion topics for the hepatotoxicity white paper. We'll talk about what uh, white papers we're ready to update and get, gather our initial ideas of what updates we want to make. So again, as I said, we, you know, we used to, our, even though our projects have been working for quite some time, we still have a lot of work to do and we would love more project team members. So we're excited for anybody who might be new um, to this work and, and joining our working group. We would love to have you. And then, if, you know, if you can't, if you are going to a different working group for the CSS or not able to make the CSS, you know, certainly there's, you know, please join us and here are different working groups or list boxes you can join and we would, we would still have you and we'll, we'll have work for quite some time. All right. I think, do I need to pass it to someone now? Mary, can you pass it to Scott, please? I will. Cool. Thank you so much. And uh, let's see. So I do apologize for the technical difficulties in the beginning, and thank you on the webinar for kind of bearing with us through that. I know that we had one question that came in from the audience, um, and I think this would go to either uh, Jane and or Sue. So the question we had is, does the legacy data conversion plan team plan to only cover clinical studies or will it also cover non-clinical? I don't know, Jane or Sue, if you have any comments on that. I, well, this is Jane. I can answer it. I'm more familiar with the clinical side. I actually wasn't even thinking about that with the non-clinical of doing conversion. So I'm going to have to let Sue talk about talk about that one from our scope no was problem. the clinical. So Sue, if you could add to that. <laughs> sure, no problem. Um, so we're, all, we're thinking about it, um, and we do have uh, one or two folks from the non-clinical side watching, the, uh, watching Jane's project. Uh, this, is an, this is an example of where, you know, we would love to help if there is interest of people at the CSS to, you know, have a, um, a joint discussion, we would certainly support that with people who, uh, from the non-clinical group who are interested or, or have opinions on that. In the meantime, one of our, I would say, objectives around both SDRG and uh, SDSP and legacy data conversion in all these different reports and plans, we like to be as consistent with clinical as makes sense. Um, as we can so that the norms and definitions and things like that uh, are consistent. So um, for sure, I think there's a lot of value in uh, considering both of those things because we, we also have the legacy data conversion question as well. 
Thanks, Dan and Sue. So as we wrap up this meeting, you heard today a lot of great activities are going to be happening at the 2017 CSS. So I just want to kind of give you a few important dates as well as a few uh, things maybe that you can kind of ruminate on as we, as we leave the webinar. So again, the, the 2017 CSS will be taking place March 19th through the 21st in beautiful Silver Spring, Maryland. Um, hopefully this year the weather will hold out as well. A couple years ago we had three inches of snow during that time, so hopefully uh, we'll have nice weather. The meeting highlights, you heard some of the activities that will be going on today. We will be opening on Sunday with a working group overview as well as a uh, workshop from the linked um, graph and database working group. Uh, we have the Linkathon that will be prototyping alternatives to the SAS transport, which I think is, a, is an interesting activity, again, as well as all of the other uh, content that you heard this morning or this afternoon, depending on your time zone. And then, as usual, we will wrap up the 2017 CSS with an interesting panel discussion um, from the FDA. So, as of today, we have 156 folks registered. Um, when I first got this slide deck, which was Monday, we only had 100, 100 people registered. So as you can see, registration is uh, starting to, to tick up. There are only 300 spots available, and once we reach that 300, we do have to close it. So if you are interested in attending the CSS to participate in some of the working group activities that you heard today, we would encourage you to register as soon as possible. And one of the reasons for that is the actually early bird registration, so the reduced rate registration ends uh, on January 27th. So if you are thinking of attending the CSS, please uh, get your registration in this week to get that early bird rate. Otherwise, um, registration will continue right up until the point that we have the full 300, and that actually occurred last year, probably in mid to late February. So again, if you are thinking of attending the meeting, now is the time to register. Registration itself, and if we do not hit the 300 limit, um, it would be closed on March 13th uh, in advance of the opening session on the 19th. So again, I want to thank you for your time today at participating in this webinar as well as the presenters. I hope you got a lot of useful information and we look forward to seeing you on a webinar in the future with hopefully a few less uh, technical difficulties. And again, we hope to see you at the 2017 CSS. So again, thank you for your time.